Hey guys and welcome back. In this video, we'll be covering about dictionaries. So you can think about dictionaries um, just like in the photo here, that you know the word and you're trying to find the meaning of that word, right? So uh, the same concept applies uh, in programming when we refer to a dictionary in programming, then what we have is a, a key and value pair where a key is a representation of the values it stores and these values can be anything like strings, ints, lists, uh, sets uh, and even another dictionary for example. So let's have a look at the details of dictionary now. So dictionaries are mapped up of two components, key and value pairs. Um, basically the key uh, acts like a set. Essentially it is unordered and any key can appear once at most and keys must be immutable. That means we cannot have any duplicate keys and we cannot change or update the key values associated with. Rather, if you want to change the keys, you probably create a new key and copy over the value associated with the old key into the new one, right? But on that note, uh, the values can be changed. So values are mutable objects inside a dictionary. So let's create some examples and essentially what we do is use a curly brackets to create dictionaries. Here we are. That's way too big. So this is an example of dictionary. So let's run this. So what we have is fruit count. We look at it. Then it contains uh, the values uh, of the dictionary. So we can check the type of fruit count. Then it tells me that this is class dictionary. So this is of type dictionary. You can also create some um, empty dictionary. Empty dictionary equals just curly brackets. And as we have seen in the sets video, um, type of this empty dictionary is also class uh, dictionary. So these curly brackets Normally in mathematical notation, it used to represent a set. However, uh, this uh, notion has been used to represent a dictionary in Python. Okay, so what can we do with dictionary? Well, just like when you look up the word, it tells us the meaning. If you look up the key, then it tells us the contents of uh, the dictionary. So we have the fruits. And what you do is, rather than giving the index as an integer value, you provide the key and it's going to uh, give us the value associated with this. So for example, we have uh, apple, then it's gonna tell us the value associated with apple is one. Okay, so that's what we created the apple with. Uh, we, you can try this with uh, other dictionaries and um, you can um, look up any other keys uh, not associated with it. But what happens is if uh, you're trying to access a non-existing key, potato, then it's going to give us an error, right? So key error is given. Um, so you can either capture this through the exceptions, but it's much better if you uh, do some pre-testing to see whether the key exists inside the dictionary. And this is done by using the in operator. So in operator for the sets checks whether the membership uh, exists, uh, but in the dictionary, it checks whether the key exists uh, before you're trying to access the content. So if we do uh, if apple uh, in fruit counts, then print uh, apple is in stock, All right? Then we can write out uh, something like this. So you can probably change this as, as a, like a variable. So for all the stocks that you would like to check whether it's in the dictionary, uh, if uh, the item is in fruit count, then you can print uh, item is in stock, right? If you want to create a new entry into the dictionary, uh, it's very simple. You just go uh, dictionary name in the square bracket, you'll uh, provide a key, uh, value and then you assign a value. For example, now I have 40 potatoes or in the lecture slide 42 mangoes, right? Then next, uh, we can search uh, what's the content of this particular key, then it shows us uh, the value without the error. 
Okay, you can always delete the content um, associated with the key using, for example, delete uh, operation. So fruit count uh, here, potato. <clears throat> then now if I try to access potato again, it's going to give us an error because potato doesn't exist anymore. So this way is to delete. Or you can use the pop method associated with it. So dot pop, uh, and then we can go apple. Apple, then what it does is it returns the value associated with the key and then uh, it removes that key from the dictionary. So next time I want to access um, Apple, it no longer exists. Okay. So just going back quickly on our previous slide about name dict. So Previously, we have seen the creation of an empty set using a set constructor. So, so the built-in method, right? So if uh, empty set equals set, we can do something like this. And we can do the same with the dictionary. So empty dic equals dictionary, bracket, bracket. And here what we see is empty dictionary is now an empty dictionary. Okay. So you can either use the curly brackets to specify it's an empty dictionary, or you can use the constructor to create one as well. However, most, most of the time people will just use the curly brackets and that is a, a, a common practice. So you don't have to worry about using the constructor all the time. Instead, you can uh, pass in the con uh, some pairs into constructor and that might give us a, um, the new dictionary made out of what you pass in. So for example, a one, something like this. Oh, length one is two is required. Uh, yeah. Okay. Oops. I need to specify um, the ones that gives you like the mapping between two values. So if you remember the enumerate function that we had before, we can create something like that. So for example, uh, enumerate uh, and give some alphabets like this. Uh, and what this enumerate function gives us is the index and value pairs. And what we can do is map it back to the dictionary. So if we do that, oh, it shouldn't be called empty dictionary anymore. However, if we look at it now, the index of A is zero, index of B is one, index of C is two, and this has been now created as a dictionary item, okay? So we can pass in uh, something that has the mapping uh, between the two different types and chuck it into the dictionary constructor. And then it's going to give us the dictionary object made out of those uh, values that we pass in. Okay, uh, anyway, coming back to here. So we covered um, checking the items and uh, removing them. If you want to get rid of all the items in the dictionary, which all you have to do is call the clear method. So if I go, uh, Fruits, is it? No, fruit, fruit count is a dictionary dot clear. Then now I have the uh, fruit count is an empty dictionary. So this is a quick and easy way of just deleting everything uh, inside a dictionary. And uh, next one is to use the get uh, method, which returns the value associated with the key. Uh, or an optional default if the key is not present. So this is uh, one way we can avoid uh, some error with uh, trying to access a value which doesn't exist in the uh, dictionary. So let's try that. Run this again. So reset my fruit count. Um, uh, fruit count dot get, and then I can try get an apple. So if I have uh, a key inside, it will show me the value I have, okay? Or let's try to get something, uh, uh, say grapes uh, or grape. Um, and what I can tell is uh, as a second argument is that if that key doesn't exist in the dictionary, which means I don't have a value, then I can specify a value and this will give me instead. So 100 there, then this has returned me hundred instead of throwing out an error. So as you can see, you can use this feature uh, to try to avoid uh, 
the error that we have seen before. So we'll have a look at the example shortly. Okay, so keys return a list-like object of the dictionary keys. So we can use this keys method to only get the uh, keys inside the dictionary. So fruit count dot keys. Then I only get uh, a list like object. So this is this isn't exactly a, a list. So this is dictionary keys. Keys. Okay. So this is a type dictionary key. So this is not exactly a list. You have to convert it. So what you can do is um, keys. You can pass this into a list constructor. Then this will turn up. Uh, give us a list okay so always check the types if you're unsure okay and you can also get uh, the items uh, for example uh, fruit counts dot items and what this does is it's not only going to give us the items associated with uh, each key in, in the dictionary it's going to give us the pairs of them so this one it gives us dictionary items again this is a, not a list but a list like type so you can see that there's a square bracket in here so what we can do is again we can convert this into a list by chucking this into a list constructor so you can see that key value pairs has now been saved into a tuple chuck it into a list and convert it into a dictionary items type which is kind of like a list okay so here, use the list constructor to convert this list-like object into a proper list. Okay, and values is the one that you want to use if you only want to get the items associated with it. So if we do fruit counts dot values, then this will give me uh, only the values associated with each um, key value pair inside the dictionary. Okay. And finally, uh, the update uh, adds add a set of key value pairs to the dictionary, either another dictionary or a list of key value pairs. So here's an example. Let's try. So we have more fruits. Uh, I'll just call it n fruits equals. Um, just create something quick. Ch cherry uh, with value seven and grape. Uh, with value 14 so that will be enough for me and fruit counts uh, fruit counts dot update and we can pass in another dictionary and what it's going to do is merge those two together okay so now if we look at oh, fruit counts now it contains cherry grape as well in the entry now we can do is um, uh, let's call m fruits again, and this time I call it twenty, leaving the cherry as is, and calling the update again. So this will run fine. So what's going to do is update existing entries. Um, so if we check the fruit counts again, so you can see that grape has been updated to twenty, while cherry remains seven. Okay, so you can always call these. Uh, if it doesn't exist, it will add those new values into the dictionary. But if it does exist, then it's just going to change the value associated with uh, each key that it has a different value. So next one is looking at loops. Um, so we can do something like I have the same fruits. Let's rerun this. So now I have the uh, fruit count and for uh, fruit in fruit. Uh, fruit count print fruit fruit uh, count fruit oh, no. fruit like this and what this returns us is if we are just iterating through the dictionary by itself it's going to return us the key only um, but because if if you know the key already you can get the uh, value straight out of it like this then we don't have to um, re re retrieve both of them. So this is one quick way of um, going through the, the items in the dictionary 
uh, do note that uh, from Python version 3.6, the one that we have recommended to use, um, keys are ordered uh, from Python. So it may show you some uh, keys that are in order. However, this one is actually not in order. Um, there are ways to order these uh, using the sort function. Normally, when we look through the list, we expect a single item that uh, gets value to over go over. However, in dictionary, you have to expect two items at a time. So it's the key and value pair that gets used. So just like the enumerate, enumerate will give you the index and item pair. The dictionary will give you the key and value pair. So going back to the looping, um, now you, you don't have to just iterate through the key. Uh, you can iterate through any of those items that returns us a list-like uh, object. So uh, for key value in fruit counts dot items, because items gives us uh, the both pairs, then we can say uh, print uh, found uh, dot format and key value pair, key value, close the bracket. So it found banana, grapple, pear, cherry, grape. Okay, so it does go over in order, but do note that this is only because uh, from Python version 3.6 that these will iterate over what you see is in order. But normally it's a, a, dangerous, assum a, a dangerous assumption that um, you will actually go through these as you see them here. Okay. Anyway, so that's the uh, way we can go over the dictionaries um, using the uh, various methods that gives us a list-like object, or you can just go through over the keys to start with. However, um, uh, it really depends on the context to which, uh, which method will be the best to do so. All right, so that's it for this video. Um, we'll cover more examples in the next one. All right, bye-bye.